You're watching the BASS presentation. Oh, it is Christmas morning. That's right. Uh, last night, I could not sleep. Why? Because this is day number one of the Bass Pro Shops Bassmaster Classic presented by Jockey Outdoors. Beautiful Grand Lake. And we are right now in Tulsa, Oklahoma, about an hour and a half away from Grand Lake. The third time the Bassmaster Classic visits this incredible fishery in the top corner of Oklahoma. And I am joined by the one and only Bassmaster Classic, two-time Angler of the Year, Bass Fishing Hall of Famer, <laughs> and really everything good on earth, Davey Height. And man, this, you've competed in this so many times, you've been part of this, it never gets old. I mean, I literally could not sleep last night. Uh, you're, you're exactly right. It, and you know, I wouldn't take anything for my career, 24 years fishing full time, but I still get goosebumps on this day, the first day of the Bassmaster Classic. Whether I'm competing in it or whether I'm sitting here with you, it is a great day to be a bass fisherman in this country, in Tulsa, Oklahoma in particular this week. This is the day that we've all been waiting for, counting down to get here. It happens once a year. This is the 54th edition of the greatest spectacle in sport fishing. and. I gotta ask you this, Davey, how do you, I mean, I get jacked up from introducing these guys in the morning. <laughs> how do you pull away from the dock and how long does it take until you're like, I mean, everything in fishing is about tranquility and peace. It's like the Bassmaster Classic takes all that, rolls it up and throws it in the garbage. I mean, it, it, it's a total distraction. It does, it's almost a love-hate relationship that anglers have with the Bassmaster Classic because you dream about it, you love it, you want to be here. That's what inspires all of us to be better professional anglers. But then when you get here, you wish, oh, I wish it wasn't so much media. I wish there wasn't, you know, so many distractions from the water. It should just be me and the fish, but really, and truly deep down inside that's not what you want this is what you live for this is what your family your fans the people that follow you through those tough times when you don't catch many fish this is what you live for as, a, as an angler and, and like i said as a fisherman in this event or any in any other bassmaster classic event this is what you live for. I mean, this is what you get up on those dreary days when the wind's blowing 30 out of the north and the fight is not very good. This is what we all want to live for to be right here. Well, here's what I live for. I live for our Toyota Midday Report because <laughs> oh we got to figure out what has been happening on this incredible body of water. And that shows you a good idea of how our field is spread out. But let's get caught up with our Toyota Midday Report. And let's start with an angler who is already a two-time Elite Series champion, Koya Fujita. Yeah, we saw his stats there uh, a little earlier today, Mercer. I know you've been to take off and back and doing all kind of crazy things. You missed this. First time ever on Bassmaster TV, Koya Fujita catching him on a spinnerbait this morning. He was like, I, I didn't know if it was a Japanese Jimmy Houston or the <laughs> Prince of Japan or what, what, what was going on with the spinnerbait. But here's one thing we did learn with Koya. He doesn't hide the spinnerbait like he does those other baits. He was proud to see us, uh, let us see him catching him on the spinnerbait. So, Koi Fujita currently unofficially in 18th place, 10 pounds, 2 ounces. Caught two of the fish that we saw him uh, that he put in the live well earlier today on a spinnerbait. He has been doing some forward facing sonar type stuff with the jig head minnows, but really the best bait. I don't think I would ever thought I would have said this for Koya has been the double willy spinnerbait so far this morning. Brandon Polnick, a two-time angler of the year, and he got a second place finish here back in 2013. Yeah, there's something about Brandon this week, and, and Zona kind of clued me into this. He talked to me before I did. A, a, a calm, little confident, and I, I don't mean it's bad, but but just quiet, confident Brandon Polnick. He's always a little bit that way, but more so this week. That second place finish, he has not forgotten. Believe you me, if you finish second in a Bassmaster Classic, you never forget it. It had really kind of passed me by. I'd forgotten about that a little bit. But he got on a good little deal fishing out Main Lake more this morning than the other anglers with a crankbait. Unfortunately, we saw him lose one. It was at least four pounds, probably four and a half pounds. Would have him right in the mix if he'd have been able to land that fish. The loudest pop at takeoff this morning was for the next big thing, Ben Milliken. So it's absolutely incredible to watch Ben Milliken. Just two Elite Series tournaments. He's tied for Angler of the Year. Obviously has a big following, currently unofficially in 10th place with 11 pounds, 14 ounces. But here, even with all the you know, he's been in front of cameras as much or more than 99% of maybe, maybe 98% or whatever of the anglers in this classic. 
but you could see the twinkle in his eyes yesterday this morning he said 11 years ago i i went to my first bassmaster classic because i wanted to check it out and see if it was a real deal he was here in tulsa oklahoma 11 years later he said I am here because of that. I saw that this is the biggest stage in our sport, and I wanted to get here. How ironic is it for Ben Milliken to be here and unofficially being all the way up in 10th place? A great start for him in Tulsa, Oklahoma. What about the back-to-back -back Bassmaster Classic champion, Hank Cherry? Hank Cherry, uh, no surprise to being on the big stage, and he has won two Bassmaster Classics. The third that he almost won right here oh. also. A lot of history here for Hank Cherry. Currently, unofficially in third place, 14 pounds, six ounces. Looks very similar to what we saw him do at Gunnersville. Started off with a jig around some boat docks, mixing up with a bladed jig. Promise Mark Zona that we would see some of those same areas and some of the same baits that he almost won this event in way back when it was so, so cold. He finished second. I think everyone remembers that fish that he lost that cost him that event in his rookie season. I remember it. One of the most uncomfortable moments ever on stage is, is watching it, watching him lose those fish, and yeah. then having our producer Mike McKinnis tell me in the air, "We're going to play it again <laughs> and again and again <laughs> and again." Speaking of again and again and again, a guy who seems to always be in the mix, Jay Shakurat. Yeah, you know what a what a great start to his Elite Series career, no doubt. Winning Rookie of the Year, winning an event there on the Thousand Islands there out of Clake, New York. Over 100 pounds of smallmouth. And he's, like you just mentioned, Dave, he's kind of always in the hunt. I guess it has slipped my mind. Last year, he was one of the ones with only an hour and a half, two hours to go that Jason Keurig had a chance to win last year's classic. He kind of stayed in the mix, fishing shallow, isolated cover, the exact same thing he's done. This is just moments ago to move up to have almost 17 pounds. So he's staying right there. What a great start for the young angler. Believe he has a win here, but from the back of the boat. I mean, it's hard to believe that when he showed up, obviously his dad, Jason Shakur, a very accomplished walleye pro. Yep. And I remember that first takeoff at, in Palatka, and, and they said, we don't know if he's ready yet, but we can't turn down the opportunity. It's so hard to qualify for the Elite Series. Well, I think it's official. Yeah. JC Couric is yeah. ready, and he's sitting in second place in this tournament. But Cody Huff, a silent guy, a guy that does his talking at the scales. But when Rick Clun tells the world that you're an incredible angler, I'm pretty sure you're an incredible angler. Yeah, don't know if he's ready or not, like JC <laughs> Couric, but if Rick Clun says he is, he probably is. Not Cody Huff, your tournament later, 20 pounds even. And in a season where everybody thought, oh, wait, a bass fishing's only going to be scoping. It's only going to be deep water. He's catching him in some shallow water here today. Yeah, a little surprising. I think we had uh, Robbie Floyd try to get to Cody Huff and was not able to get to him. So that tells you it was really skinny waters. But good for Cody Huff. A great start this morning with unofficially about 20 pounds in his live well. So... What a great start. Not a, not a surprise at all to see him doing well here. Um, he really doesn't live that far from here. I think mm -hmm. Ronnie said technically he lives closer to Grand Lake than uh, some of our other anglers that are from Oklahoma. Oh, boy. Prodigy we... hooked up, and it looks like a good one. Another real good fish here. Stay down. Stay down. Not a giant one, but... Decent one. Definitely a cooler. There we go. Definitely a cooler. That's how they've been eating it, like where it's like in their mouth. I sent Z a photo, like that's how they've been eating it. Not a big one, but he's a cooler. Thought he was a good one. That cast before it, I felt one push it. I don't know if it was the same fish or a different fish, but for, for sure felt one push it right before. Get rid of number five, the one we just caught. Okay. Pull this out here. As you say, I mean, he is definitely 
exuding kind of a quiet confidence yeah. in and I and I feel like whoa whoa it's where whoa. he's gonna be for the easy, next no, I, he knows this is time for me to fill the freezer full of meat and in meat <laughs> I mean trophies and this yeah. is the huh? one that he's been so Go close to business. I mean yeah. it, if he were to win the Bassmaster Classic Davey Height is is Brandon Polnick already a bass fishing Hall of Famer six wins two angler of the year titles and a classic small up Oh, and yeah, and a classic for sure, for sure. That's not so sure he's not to destined it. to be there already without a classic, what he's done, but. It's kind of like the, the Patrick Mahomes. The cast of right before that one pushed Bass it. fishing, maybe. I don't know, I'm just saying. That's, yeah. that, that's almost I just, like uh, I felt, it was like Rick Clinton saying to Cody Huff. And then it just it. went. That's pretty, and pretty it took off from, sideways. From did a weird movement, but didn't get it. And then next cast caught that one. I don't know if it was the same fish different fish but is it i mean right there the same cast from brandon polnick we're gonna head up to jay shakura at and not just jay we're gonna be joined by our good friend the one and only robbie floyd What's going on, Robbie? Uh, I just keep following Jay around all morning. I went to see uh, Kenta Kamura. To get up in. Hey, he's going to. He's going to be the guy. Sorry, I thought I had a lavalier on. Uh, first time on television. <laughs> I thought he was going to be one of the guys to look for again, Oklahoma angler. And the guy next to him happened to be the guy that was catching all the fish this morning. So I, I've stumbled upon a good one. And you see he's been staying near the top. Now, this is probably a secondary area. I'm trying to stay off away because the wind's trying to blow. And by the way, guys, I know uh, or I don't know if y'all are able to notice this. There is a ripple on the water. So the wind is now starting to blow. It's not that slick we had earlier. But when the wind picked up, I started seeing more fish being caught by other people and then Jay caught that three and uh, or what a four and three quarter pounder just a little while ago so, so Robbie th this morning I know there were a lot of anglers there around you said Kenta and and, and Jay uh, have they kind of settled out and not as many anglers right around where Jay's at now well, yeah, no, there's nobody. It's just Jay and myself. Jay's probably wondering, why are you still here? Everybody else has left <laughs> as he smiles a little bit. But we know why, because he's been catching fish, and he's been catching the right size fish. But there was only one other angler in the spot when Jay was there, and that was Kenta. We did see, uh, I believe it was Ben Milliken that went to that area later on in the day, and his flotilla was stupid whenever he went by us. He had 25, 30 boats following him. But uh, for the most part, uh, I mean, 99% of the time jay's been all by himself robbie we've seen you for over decades basically covering the Bassmaster classic and and one thing i love about you is your hair game is always strong and for the first time i'm seeing you with a hat on oh, did yeah. you go bald or run out of gel no no and i went <laughs> to uh, ross dress for less to find this hat so y'all wouldn't make fun of my hair all day but i uh, i did go get a hat yesterday looks like we're going to pick up and leave here in just a second uh they call it, jay called this the promised land a minute ago and i and he really got a smile on his face when he heard you mention that he was a great walleye angler uh, jay a little thumbs up for that maybe <laughs> but uh, he's just been hopping spot to spot and he called this uh, area the promised land it's where he caught that four and three quarter pounder but he's been getting caught up a lot uh, a lot of sticky stuff down there whether it be old fishing line or or that wood from the uh, the brush piles or what have you but he's been losing a bait or two thank you very much robbie great stuff as always and let's move over to a two-time bassmaster classic champion and he won those back to back a four-time bassmaster winner in total north carolina's hank cherry and he wants some grand redemption here this week Hank Cherry's another angler that uh, just has that little confidence exuding from him, like Brandon Polnick. That, that, there are certain anglers, and we're not just saying this. Honestly, you know them better than anyone because you every morning and every afternoon you're face-to-face -face with every one of these anglers. Sometimes late at night. Sometimes <laughs> late at night and in between. <laughs> but but honestly, you can. some anglers just have that – this is the big dance, and they know it, and, and they they want to fill that locker. Oof. Costly Ooh. loss. 
That hurts. You also have to think, let's be honest. I mean, if you've been on a chat board in the last few weeks, all these guys have heard about, well, these like young guys are taking over the sport. <laughs> they want to make a statement yeah. here. Yeah, so true. You know that. I know that. They haven't necessarily said Some that. Drag but. that loose. <sighs> you know, one, one thing is for certain. I mean, it, you don't want to lose a fish on the bat during the Bassmaster Classic, but if you do, we're going to show it again. And again. <laughs> so let's show it. Let's see this. He's got a fish up beside the boat on a jig. He's been, well, bladed jig, I think, maybe in this case. Right beside the boat. Going to lift him. He's in. Oh, that's inches from in the boat right there, literally. That fish could have just as easily fallen in the boat as out. Then we would have said it was skill, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. I think he can recover from that. I mean, we've seen him lose a lot bigger fish yeah. on this body of water. And that's, as an angler, that's a big part of your game. Oh, yeah. I mean, recovering from moments like that. You have to. You have to. And this is the most difficult week of the year to recover from that. But, but certainly Hank can. You know who I miss? I miss our reigning and defending progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year, the one and only Stone Cold Kyle Welcher. And he, this morning at takeoff, also very laser focused and remarkably calm as he always is. I really think we're gonna see the catches pick up now that wind is very different than it was this morning. Evidently, he was listening. Ooh. <laughs> Fortunately, that one made it in instead of out. Like hey, bite a little bit right here. That's five. You look at our current progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year leaderboard, and there is a lot of names that you're used to seeing a lot higher up in those standings. No better way to turn around your season than have a big Bassmaster oh, Classic. Yeah. yeah, just totally change your, your mindset, your frame of mind. Obviously to the winner, but but I think maybe more to your point, a top 10 here would just totally change your momentum going into the rest of the late series. I've mentioned this you, to you several times, Dave. You recognize the talent in Kyle Welcher before I did, and I, it's just my bad. It's the only way I know to say it, but yeah. now that I pay attention more like I should, he, man, he just... He just rolls with the conditions each day. And he's just one of those guys that, and that's how you win angle year. You're just not going to have those real bad finishes very often. Had a slower start this year than, than we've ever seen him like have. Right down through here, you know. It's not bad. I would have liked to caught that one under that dot because I felt like that was a good one. The way he thinks. That was the first thing that stood out to me. I had a conversation with him, and I'm like, this is the, the close to perfect mixture of Aaron Martins and Kevin Van Dam. I mean, he has that outside of the box thinking that Aaron so famously always had, thinking of things, seeing things different. And he has a lot of that step on their throat, I want to win, yeah. that KVD has. Yeah. Without showing it yeah. as much. And that's part of the poker face deal that he has. You know, don't, don't show your hand. Currently sitting in 21st place. Recently became a brand new daddy. That's a good way to celebrate your angler of the year. Very small fish he had on there.
not only is this wind, I always find watching this, not only is the wind going to make them bite better, most likely, I think it's a switch in the anglers, too. Oh, yeah. Just that little bit of a change. Yep. And it's about the time of day where the, if you've had a slow morning, you need something, you know, and, and to your point, maybe it's not as much the wind in, in every single area as it is the confidence in, okay, let's, here we go. Let's, let's start doing what, what we know we can do and we had success in in practice. Uh, I'll be, I'll be interested to see. We saw Jason Christie throw a top order a little bit this morning, a walking bait, caught a small fish or two. Saw Greg Hagney throwing a plopper style top order bait. Well, we're interested to see what the a little chop, you know, too much wind in top water doesn't really go together, but a little bit of wind here could could maybe pick that bite up. I'd love to see some top water action in this Bassmaster Classic. It doesn't look like a big change when you're looking from above the water, but the amazing thing, you know, the more underwater footage that I'm lucky enough to be able to shoot, it amazes me. It literally, the best way to explain what happens under the water is it looks like a strobe light all of a sudden you know you can see so much but that strobe light makes those fish more comfortable i would assume you know it makes them a, probably a much more lethal uh, at, at feeding. predator yeah. yeah yeah i do love a strobe light <laughs> And Kyle Welcher, you know, just he very comfortable picking up this jig, you know, the crank bait, jerk bait. He's, you know, got a lot of rods on the front deck. And unlike some people who just put a lot up there and don't necessarily use them, I was guilty of that sometimes, but he uses all of them up there. You know, I have a dozen rods and reels out and use every single one of them. And looks very proficient with, you know, with a jig in his hand, a crank bait, a jerk bait, whatever. Spinning rod, finesse. From Grand Lake, we head all the way over here to Tulsa, Oklahoma, our host city, and we're hanging out here at the Bass Pro Shops tailgate party, mm -hmm. driven by Yokohama Tires, and uh, a cra it's unbelievable. From our vantage point, I can see every entrance to the expo, and there is a lineup to get into yes. the, and it's Friday. So uh, I've, I've said this, and I don't know why I say this every year, but I say this uh, thinking, is this year going to be the year where the <laughs> attendance goes down just a little bit? And it's not. It's not. It goes up. It goes up. I saw them with forkloads of buckets, of buckets, of buckets. And we know those buckets in the expo, look out. Lots of free stuff to be given away. But it's great to be here, out here with you, Dave Mercer, and, and seeing the people lining up. They're about to open the doors. And uh, it's going to be another fantastic Bassmaster Classic. It's truly a celebration of our sport, and this is the one, the 54th edition of the Bassmaster Classic. Of course, the Bass Pro Shops Bassmaster Classic, presented by Jockey Outdoors, and atop that leaderboard, Cody Huff with 20 pounds even. Jay Shakurik behind him, and uh-oh, Lee Livesey has an incredible track record in Bassmaster Classics, Davey Hyde. I mean, I, don't th I think his worst Bassmaster Classic is 15th or something yeah, like that. Yeah, not many people know that. We need to talk about that a little bit more when we come back. He's definitely someone we need to keep our eyes on. Our leaderboard will continue to change. The goal to get into Championship Sunday. The first two days, the entire field fishes. So we're not all professional anglers. We don't all compete on the biggest stage. But inside us all burns the same fire to be a champion. It's why you get out early, brave the toughest conditions, point the bow toward adventure and put the hammer down. For whatever trophy or fish or memory you're chasing,